Let me start. Okay, welcome and thank you everyone for being on. This is the 2021 Summer Crawl Workshop Series. This is the second one in this series. It's called Credit Reports and Managing Your Credit Score, the importance of keeping track of your information. We are with the University of Nevada, Reno Extension, and this is funded by the Native American Ag Fund. We want to give huge props and full disclosure, this is a Ruby Ward presentation. <laughs> she does, she's an economist at Utah State University and just kills it with this um, type of information for finance. I am Vicki Hebb and we have Kaylee Chapin. They say right. And we yeah. are both um, working with uh, outreach with the University of Nevada, Reno, um, as well as our boss, Stacey M, who is also on our uh, workshop today. Hold on, I have one other person coming in. So let's pause just a moment, please. And Kaylee, I'm gonna make you co-host. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and keep going. So today we're going to cover these key concepts. Um, what is a FICO score? What is a good credit score? How is my credit score calculated? And what is a credit report? Getting and checking my credit report. What to do if you are a victim of identity theft and strategies to improve credit. Okay, let's start with what is a FICO score. So FICO, first of all, stands for Fair Isaac Corporation. FICO is an analytic software company that compiles credit data, for data from various credit reporting agencies. It is used in 90 countries worldwide. They have been in business since 1956 and 95% of the largest financial institutions in the United States and all the 100 largest US credit card issuers, issuers are FICO, FICO clients. They use that data to run math algorithms and create a score. The scores are then credit scores used by 90%, as I just said, and lend lenders want to know the risk they're taking by lending you money. For example, how likely is someone to pay their bills on time or can they handle a larger credit line? Okay, FICO scores, do not consider your race, color, religion, age, salary, um, occupation, title, employer, although let's be honest, lenders may consider this information regardless. Where you live, um, US law prohibits credit scoring from considering these facts as well as any receipt of public assistance or the exercise of any consumer right. Oh, let me. I got one more here, Dad. There we go. Um, they also do not count promotional inquiries. So these would be requests made by lenders in order to make you pre-approved um, credit offer or administrative inquiries, um, requests made, made by lenders to review your account with them. Requests that are marked as coming from employers are not counted either. Um, any items reported as Child family support obligations are not considered. Any information not found in your credit report cannot be considered, as well as if you are participating in credit counseling. So score calculations, um, they are based on data from credit reports. Separate FICO scores for each of the three credit bureaus. Um, higher is better. For a valid score, the credit report must have at least one account open for six months or more, at least one account that has been reported to the credit bureau within the past six months, and no indication of disease on the credit report. So please know if you share an account with another person, this may affect you if the other account holder is reported deceased. And the minimum scoring criteria may be satisfied by a single account or by multiple accounts on a credit file. So a score, a FICO score component is based on these five categories. 35% um, is your payment history. 30% is your total debt. 
15% length of credit history, 10% credit mix, and 10% new credit. So for some groups, the importance of these categories may vary. For example, people who have not been using credit long will be factored differently than those with a longer credit history. And the levels of importance shown in the FICO score chart are for the general population. And it will be different for different credit profiles. Okay, so the biggest factor weighted in that FICO score is payment history, and it's weighted at 35%. Paying on time is one of the most important factors. Overall, good credit is more important than missing one or two payments. The first thing any lender wants to know is whether you've paid past credit accounts on time. A few late payments are not an automatic score killer. Payments not considered in this is rent, utilities, unless they go to collections, and then they are. With collections, older items and items with small amounts will count less than recent items or those with larger amounts. Bankruptcies will stay on your credit report for seven to 10 years. So um, you also wanna consider your payment history that includes your credit cards, retail accounts, installment loans, and of course, mortgage loans. Negative factors, like I just said, is bankruptcies, foreclosures, lawsuits, wage attachments, liens, and judgments. And then, of course, late or missed. Really, um, like we said, it's not a score killer, but um, how late and how much is owed is considered into factoring that as well. Okay, total debt is 30%. Okay, so when a person has a higher percentage of credit that is being used, this can indicate that the person is overextended and is more likely to make late or missed payments. It's also important to note that your current account balance isn't necessarily the balance, hold on one second, sorry about that, that shows up on your credit report and factors into your FICO scores. Your account balance on your credit report will reflect the account balance your lender reported to the credit bureau typically the balance from your latest monthly statement. So even if you pay your credit balances in full each month, your account balance won't necessarily show on your credit report as zero. Paying down installment loans is a good sign that you're able and willing to manage and repay debt. So when you look at your total debt, they're taking into consideration the amount owed on different types of accounts, all of your accounts, credit utilization of revolving accounts, like how much high percentage, if you are using all of your credit negative, that's a negative impact. Low percentage is positive impacts in cases better than not using any of your available credit. Someone who is close to maxing out several credit cards has a high credit utilization ratio and may have, making, may have trouble making payments in the future, therefore making them a high risk. So, oh. All right. Did you get the other participants coming in? Yes, I did. Thank you. So the length of your credit history is 15% and longer credit history will increase score, but new users will not necessarily be negatively impacted. Um, the age of your oldest account, and the age of your newest account, the average age of all accounts, and the use of certain accounts. These all are taken into, um, into the history. So credit mix is 10% and it is a mix of your credit cards, retail accounts, installment loans, finance company accounts and mortgage loans will be considered. Um, has your credit experience been only one type? It's not necessary, necessary to have one of each. The credit mix usually won't be a key factor in determining your FICO scores, but it will be important if your credit report does not, does not have a lot of other information on which to base the score. So people with no credit cards tend to be viewed as a higher risk than people who have managed credit cards responsibly. A closed account still shows on your report and how many is too many will vary depending on your overall credit picture. Um, and so you don't, you can raise your FICO score by having credit cards and installment loans with 
a good payment history and don't open accounts you won't use. Okay, so um, new credit counts for 10%. So looking for new credit can equate with higher risk, but most credit scores are not affected by loans that com commonly involve rate shopping, such as mortgage, auto, and student lenders with a sh within a short period of time. So typically these are treated as a single inquiry and will have little impact on your scores. If you need a loan, do your rate shopping within a focused period of time, like 30 days. Um, do not open a lot of accounts quickly because that uh, represents risk. How many recent inquiries there are when a lender makes a request for your credit report or score affects your score and inquiries are on your report for two years, but only impact your FICO score for 12 months. All right, so where are we at? Good, bad, or ugly? So scores usually range from 300 to 850. So obviously 850 being the best. And here's a cost comparison based on a credit score. So if you buy a new vehicle and you have great credit, so 730 or above versus if you have 679 or below. So your car costs 30,000. If you have good credit, you're gonna come in at 2.99% interest rate versus if your credit is not good, you're gonna be at 7.25%, which is almost a four and a half point difference. So um, your term month is 60 months. When you get done with a good credit score, you're at 32,335 versus a not so good credit score and you're at 35,855. So a 51 point difference will cost you $3,520 in the end. So, and a 51 point difference is not that much. Uh, you know, Kaylee and I have been talking and we've had situations that we were unaware of and it affects it in a bigger one. So um, you really wanna watch what your score is and keep a good eye on that. So. So where is my score? A lot of people will ask. Um, most banking institutions offer a free score, especially to those with credit cards. So here's a list of examples. Um, Bank of America card holders use TransUnion. Citibank uses Equifax. Chase card holders uses Experian. Walmart and Sam's Club members, uh, they use TransUnion. TransUnion and USAA, all of their credit card holders use Experian. Um, just a little side note here is Discover was the first to offer to customers and non-customers their official Experian FICO for free. And it was called the Discover Credit Scorecard. But however, most, um, most if, if not all, banks offer this to all of their customers now. So when you look at your score, um, the credit report, what's in it? Identifying factors um, such as your name, address, social security, date of birth, et cetera, are not used in the score, credit scoring. Credit accounts are known in the business as trade lines and lenders report on each account you have established with them, such as type of account, date opened, credit limit, account balance, and payment history. When you apply for a loan, you authorize your lender to ask for a copy of your credit report. This is how inquiries appear on your report. The inquiry section contain a list of everyone who accessed your credit report within the last two years. The report you see lists both voluntary inquiries spurred by your own request for credit and involuntary, um, such as when lenders order your report so as to make you a pre-approved credit offer in the mail. Public record information and collections include bankruptcies, foreclosures, suits, wage attachments, liens, and judgments, um, like Vicki had previously mentioned. And these can come from state and county courts. Okay, so as Kaylee said, there's three credit reporting agencies, Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian. Um, so if you don't have 
your credit card online, you can get a free copy once every 12 months, and it will be a detailed um, copy of that. Whereas when you're online with your bank, it's just going to give you your overall score. So um, you don't want to contact each of these separately. You want to go to annualcreditreport.com or you can call this toll free number and they um, compile the three together. Um, because again, if you're checking on your credit, it still affects your score. So you want to check on your credit um, together with all three of them combined through this website. Um, and also you can keep a really good eye on it just through your websites, um, bank websites, if you're doing that as well. All right, so why do I need it? Your credit report has information that affects you, whether you can get a loan, how much you'll have to pay to borrow money. You want a copy of your credit report to make sure the information is accurate, complete, up to date. Um, it will make a difference on how much you pay for large purchases like a house or a car. Even insurance checks your credit reports. Even jobs will check it. So very important to make sure you're keeping up on it. It also helps guard against identity theft. So that's when someone steals your personal information, your social security number, uh, your credit card, or they use your information to get a credit card. Um, so it's very important, we can't stress it enough, um, to really watch your credit, watch that score to make sure that it's either improving <laughs> or if you have great credit, that it's staying there. When you get your report, you need to evaluate it. Um, to protect the security of your personal information, you may be asked a series of questions that only you would know, like your monthly mortgage payment. And if you request your report online at annual report at annualcreditreport.com, you should be able to access, access it immediately. And three things to look for. Is your information accurate? What are your balances? And are there any creditors on your report that supposedly owe that you owe that you don't remember doing business with? Next, if you need to fix some errors that were on that report, um, all three credit bureaus accept filing disputes online. You can contact the bureau and the creditor, and you can also get a sample letter, which is available on the link you can see on here at the PowerPoint. And um, this, this, this dispute will be investigated within 30 days, and you will receive the written results and a free copy of your revised report. So one, tell the credit report, reporting company in writing what information you think is inaccurate. Two, tell the creditor or the information provider in writing that you dispute an item. When the investigation is complete, the, the credit reporting company must give you a written result and a free copy of the report. This free report though does not count as your annual free report. And if an investigation doesn't resolve your dispute with the credit reporting company, you can ask that a statement of the dispute be included in the file and for future reports. Okay, so if you have identity theft, contact one of these four websites and file a report. It's super important because you need to claim and um, report it so that you save your credit score. Um, okay, so let's move into like if you can't pay bills on time. So it's really important to contact the companies that you owe to work out a repayment plan. Communication is huge with your creditors because a lot of times they understand. We just went through the pandemic. I'm sure you all have seen companies reaching out to you, asking if you're having trouble paying. Um, and it's just important to have that open communication so that it doesn't adversely affect your credit score. Create a budget and stick to it. Pay your home and car loans first. Um, I want to add insurance onto that as well. Uh, if you know the blind side, you got to always protect your, your, uh, your, um, your assets. So um, if you cannot make your car payment, try and sell your car first because we do not want to have it repossess repossessed if you can avoid it at all because it affects your credit 
for seven to 10 years. Which is that next slide. Oh, there it is. Okay, oh, we're getting a little lag. Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay, so it really affects your credit. It's, I mean, it's just the same thing as bankruptcy. I mean, it stays on there for a really long time. Also, the first bill paid is the cell phone usually as well. Yes. So, let's see here. So, to improve your score, um, one, you need to fix the errors. Uh, when negative information in your report is inaccurate, only time can make it go away. Beware of any advice that claims to improve your credit score fast. Um, the Credit Repair Organization Act, CROA, makes it illegal for credit repair companies to lie about what they can do for you and to charge you before they perform their services. So make sure you're at reputable credit counseling organizations. And there is also help out there to get your credit score on track. Um, you can go to www.consumerfinance.gov. Okay, so tips and strategies. So this was just pulled off my FICO.com website, but right now check your credit report. Set up payment reminders. Um, I highly encourage you to do automatic payments that can only improve your credit because, and I always do it at the beginning of the month. So right when you get paid, it comes right out and you kind of know your budget for the rest of the month. Reduce the amount of debt you owe. Um, payment history tips, obviously pay your bills on time. If you have missed payments, get current and stay current. And if you're having trouble making ends meet, contact your creditors or see a legitimate credit counselor like Kaylee was just talking about. Are we on our next one? Okay, so also amounts owed tips. So keep balances low on credit cards and other revolving credit. Um, this can also be called like signature debt. Pay off debt rather than moving it around. So this is like if you get an offer from Discover for 0% for, you know, 18 months, that's just moving it. It's not changing the situation. Um, don't open a number of new credit cards that you don't need that just just increase your available credit that puts you as a high risk. And then link the credit history tips. If you have been managing credit for a short time, don't open a lot of accounts too rapidly, like we said earlier. New credit tips, do your rate shopping for a given loan within a focus period of time. So we're just kind of recapping. Reestablish your credit history if you have had problems. Um, note that it's okay to request and check your own credit. Also note, closing an account doesn't make it go away. A closed account will still show up on your credit report and may be considered within that score. Types of credit use tips, apply for and open new credit accounts only as needed and have credit cards, but manage them responsibly. So a homework assignment for you all is to one, check your bank if they offer it, get your free FICO score and then go and get a detailed report from your www.annualreport.com or creditreport.com to request and print at least one report from one of the credit bureaus. Uh, hopefully some of these tips will help you be able to evaluate and fix and improve your scores. Are there any questions? Okay. I'm Yes, so we're at questions, and like I said earlier, I knew this was going to be a little bit of a shorter one. We had scheduled for an hour, but do we have any questions? We do. I'm going to throw something at you, and good job, girls, for putting this PowerPoint together. But I faced something, and I want to use this as an example to everybody else because I think we all take it for granted. And um, this just happened to me this last year and my credit score has not recovered 100% from it. But I was thrown from a horse in 2019 and I was in the emergency room and had all the MRIs and all of that. And I think it's important to note that medical bills can drop your credit score. And one of the things that you know we do have, I called the tribe, they knew I went in after the emergency you know, you get through where my 
work insurance paid and then I had this amount left. Well, I turned those bills into the tribe just expecting that they would be paid. And I knew that the tribe took a long time to pay those um, and really didn't pay attention, which is my fault. I didn't follow up with them and follow up with the tribe and the hospitals, you know, because you get a bill from the hospital, then you get a bill from the doctor, then you get a bill for diagnostics. So you have all of these bills. Well, in the end, I got turned into a credit agency and I caught it because my credit score dropped 75 points. Mm, yeah. And I will tell you, um, my credit score still has not recovered, but in a case like that, what would you two do? We were just talking about this because this exact thing happened to Kelsey when she was thrown for a horse at the American. And so we were in Fort Worth. And um, she doesn't even have credit. <laughs> I mean, she's just in uh, college, you know? And so Kaylee and I were talking about it because she had a similar situation with having her baby. And so um, I think that there's no easy answer about this because, you know, unless you're financially able to make those payments and you have some kind of assurance that you're going to be reimbursed, but let's be frank, IHS doesn't do that. <laughs> so... Um, you know, I think that that's part of that system that is failing, you know, tribal members when it is costing us our good credit because they process things so slowly. I don't think there's an answer. Kaylee? Um, I think you did it right, Stacey. Uh, just make sure, you know, when you catch that, you just need to go and get that paid off as soon as you can. Um, and when you speak with the, the creditors, they will, the collections agencies, I went through the similar thing. You just have to pay it off. And then within 60 days, it should be removed from your report. However, like we mentioned in our presentation, it just takes time for it to raise back up again. But you need to get it taken care of immediately right when you notice it. And um, because the collection agencies will continue to um, continue to hurt your credit score as long as, it, as long as it's in their hands. Absolutely. Good answers, ladies. Thank you. Any more questions? I've been on the presentation a little bit late, but um, one question that I had is I own my house outright and I have not had a home mortgage. And that is one thing that always pops up when I look at my credit score. Um, I have the FICO thing that you can monitor it with. And whenever I look at that, that always pops up that you don't have a <clears throat> you don't have a home loan or mortgage, so it inadvertently affects my credit score, you know, so. Wow, so I'm in the same boat. We don't have a mortgage either, but I guess I've never realized that that could adversely affect my score. That's interesting. Yeah, um, the not having enough enough loans or mortgage can also impact it. Uh, it's a it's a fine line you have to yeah. try to balance. Um, sometimes they recommend just having a little credit card that you pay off consistently, keeping that um, credit revolving. But it's definitely <laughs> that's a tough yeah. situation to be in. Not and too much, but line. not too little. <laughs> yes, exactly. <Yeah. laughs> good point, though. Yeah, when I paid off my car. Um, my credit score actually went down, which is interesting. Yeah, <laughs> you know? as did mine. Mm -hmm. I know. <laughs> yeah, it's frustrating. I know. It, it seems very. Uh, I mean, we're talking about a score that was developed in 1956, so it's it's a tricky situation that you know in our societies we're still adhering to these guidelines and algorithms but it definitely affects what we're able to do and at what rate we're able to do it so any other questions i just have another point to make i think one of the things the first thing is that a person does not need a lot of credit cards we all think we do because you get those specialty discounts um but if you have two at the most, maybe three. Um, three is kind of sometimes too much. And we get all those specialty offers for like Macy's and Lowe's. And my mom and I discuss this all the time. But if you look at the interest rates of those, you're better off staying with the one and trying to 
keep those credit limits low, which are sometimes hard to do because you go through different financial situations and things happen. Um, but I think that's the other thing. Don't have a credit card for everything. I mean, have a credit card for everything. Don't have a credit card for Macy's, credit card for Lowe's, a credit card for Home Depot. Um, yeah. And Lowe's and Home, De Home Depot run up on you very big, or at least they do me when I go in the stores. So. Menards, yes, 25%, 24.7. That is an excellent segue, Stacey, because I just want everyone to know next week, uh, Ruby Ward will be on and she's going to go through interest rates and it is staggering how much interest rates affect what you're paying for something. Um, it's definitely one of those steps that we wanna focus on. So people are looking at all angles of the purchase. Uh, the following week, we are gonna have how to buy a tractor. And again, we're kind of setting this up so that you're gonna look at interest rates. And then if you need to buy a tractor, how those interest rates affect ultimately what you're going to purchase. Okay, if we have no other questions, I thank everyone for being on. We're gonna let you go a little bit early today. Okay, thank you guys for being on. We appreciate it. Thanks, Patricia. Okay, I need to stop recording.